Yo, 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 what is going on, everybody? How you doing? Happy Friday. It's Friday. Let's go, guys. You know who this is, the chosen one, Gabriel Skywalker from the DFS Club, coming to you guys, the MLB main slate video. It's a big slate, guys. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below. You guys killed it with the comments in that last video. Thank you. You guys killed it with the views. Thank you. I covered all the games, morning through night. So... Hopefully, you guys got something out of it. Hopefully, you guys want some bread. Um, and if you're returning and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that, hit that subscribe button on your way out and do me a favor. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell, tell your neighbors. Even if you don't like them, tell them. Check out the Skywalker DFS show, man. It just – all the likes – let me adjust this real quick. All the likes in the comments is all YouTube cares about to get more eyes on my channel. So – can't do it without you guys. All I can do is continue to put out good content. Um, and hopefully when you got some money and uh, if you guys can just return the favor by uh, referring me and uh, getting some more eyes on the channel, I'd really appreciate it. So without further ado, it's a big slate. So let's start this freaking show. All right, so let's take a look at how the DFS club did today, guys. We had a lot of sports going. We had tennis overnight. Um, I had a tennis line cash. It did okay. Not a takedown, but, you know, not bad because I I play tennis every once in a while, you know, but a lot of the members in here play tennis every time. Uh, let's start off here with the bad guy. I posted from the day before. He got a 186, came in 17th. You'll see the bad guy a lot on here, guys. He wins a lot. This is our Hall of Fame wall in the DFS club on our Discord. We got prize picks here. DJ Woods hit a five, four out of five parlay. Came close on this one. Still very good. L Scientist. L Scientist has won a lot of money since he's been in the club, but very nice $180 win there. Um, another one for DJ Woods. Two pick parlay on prize picks. The bad guy. But I tell you guys, he took down in tennis again. This is two nights in a row he's taken down in tennis, so good for you, man. He did a showdown, came in fifth. DJ Woods with some more prize picks, 130 there. And then my man, Josiah, just say, just Shay, just J Shay, J Shay, came in 13th with a 183. Very nice, dude. Nice job. Um, Terry, T Dot Baller, man. Let's shout out to you, brother. 212 on Fandle today. That's a high score for today. Today was not that high scoring of a slate, but man, good job, dude. Freddie Freeman showed up to the party. 25 cent injury, says Julio. What did you do here? Some WNBA came in ninth. Um, and then DJ, 24 with some WNBA, came in 17th, won $14. Um, then we had a takedown yesterday. If you missed yesterday's video, uh, Killian took down with a 187. How the 187? You don't know. You being you all don't know 90s rap. You don't know what I'm talking about. But one over three thousand dollars here. So just another shout out to Killian, man. Um, good job, man. We love we love shipping it. We love the takedowns. If you guys want to join the DFS club? You want all my lineups, ownership, projections, top stacks, and it's a weekend. It's payday, guys. $14.99 a month gets you all that stuff. Like I, like I said, my lineups, ownership, projections, top stacks, top pitchers, core plays. Most importantly, I do the members-only podcast one hour before a lot, guys. That's when the final decisions are made. Don't miss out. I break down every single game, every single team, um, and we just get more in-depth, guys. Plus, you get every single sport. We're not just doing MLB, guys. After this, I'm probably going to shoot my UFC video for Saturday. I normally drop on Friday, but I might drop it on Thursday, see if we can get some more views on it. Um, but, yeah, every single sport. I just showed you our Hall of Fame. Then we have our slideshow here. You just want to go to the website and see what we're doing in here. I'd say we're one of the biggest in the industry as far as members. we got over 400-plus, um, and we have some big, big wins, triple-digit wins, double-digit wins. I mean, come check out the slideshow, guys. Click join now. Click my logo, Skywalker DFS, so I get credit. Thank you guys very much. And like I said, 
$14.99 a month gets you everything. Every plan gets you everything. Even a three-day pass gets you everything. The only difference is the more you pay up, the more you save. Other than that, you get everything, guys. Prize picks, sports wagering, of course, fantasy sports. Um, stop losing. Most importantly, guys, stop losing. Start winning. DFSclub.com. I'm so tilted because my FanDuel cash line missed by a half a point. I cannot make this up. A half a freaking point, man. I'd rather lose by 40 points than a half a freaking point. But it is what it is, man. Um, I always play light on those early slates, man. It's okay. Can't win every day. You can't. And people that say they do are full of shit. Let me tell you, they're full of dog shit if they say, not just cat shit, they're full of dog shit if they say they win every single day. Nobody's that damn good. All right, so let's take a look. So first look, I'm not seeing any weather concerns, so let's just start this right off, guys. Um, Houston at the Yankees. This should be a good series to watch. Uh, 75 degrees at Yankee Stadium. Uh, no winds blowing out. We got 3.7 for Houston, 4 for the Yankees. We got Justin Verlander against Luis Urbino. I don't know about you guys, but I'm totally fading Yankee starters unless they're Garrett Cole. They're all getting lit the fuck up. All of them. I don't know what it is, but these Yankee starters are just getting lit up. So with that said, a Houston stack looks really good. That run projection total there, that only 3.7, I take the over on that all day. That's probably going to go up by tomorrow. Um, Altuve is looking like his old self again. Alex Bregman got another home run today. Um, he's starting to look like his old self. Of course, Jordan, Jordan Alvarez looks good. And then Gurriel's a good, you know, 3.2K play. He's been good as of late. And he actually has a good history against this pitcher. So I like those guys. Um, and then for the Yankees, it's the usual guys. You know, DJ LeMahieu, Judge, Rizzo's kind of like cooling off a little bit. So I'm, I don't know about paying 5.8 for Rizzo. Stanton, price is coming down now. He's 5.3, almost at, in that 4K range. So if he hits that 4K range, I'm, I'm playing him in a couple days. But other than that, I mean, Verlander's a great pitcher. It's never a good idea to, to uh, stack against him, seeing as he is coming off a bad start. So the odds of him having two in a row is not very good. So more definitely of the Astros side here. Next up, we got Boston at Cleveland, 78 degrees. It's warm in Cleveland. No wind, though. No wind's blowing out. I don't think there's any winds blowing out today. Uh, 4.5 for Boston, 4.2 for Cleveland. Got a couple of uh, mediocre teams, but I do like Nick Pavetta at 9.8K. Um, when we get into pitching, I'll show you, man. He's been on fire. Cal Quantrill at 8.8. This is not interested really here. Uh, Boston players, Duran leading off at 3.5 is always a good idea. Devers has been ice cold, and you're paying a premium at 6'2", so just something to think about. He does hit righties very well. JD is just not hitting home runs like he used to, so that's a fade for me at 5'6". Um, Bogarts, ugh. Verdugo, 3 ones always a cheap play. You know, if you want to do a couple, two, a little two-man stack of Masa and save some money, you can always go Verdugo and Duran. Um, Trevor Story, it hasn't been story time in a while, so I'll fade that. And then for Cleveland, it's always, you know, for me, it's just um, Ramirez, Naylor, and Oscar Gonzalez, those three. Oscar Gonzalez has, has tuned it up a little bit, but I'm not going to go crazy against Nick Pavetta. Nick Pavetta's got the goods, guys. Next up, we got Pittsburgh at Tampa in the Dome. Very pitcher-friendly park here. 3.1 for Pittsburgh, 4.5 for Tampa. We got Mitch Keller on the mound for, for Pittsburgh at 6 7. Then we got my man. I call him old loyal man. You can rely on this guy. Jeffrey Springs, and he's still cheap. He's only 8.5K. I don't see the Pirates going off in this stadium. Maybe at home, that's a different story. They play a lot better at home, but they're going to the Dome now. So give me all the Jeffrey Springs in the world, man. Um, let's see. O'Neal Cruz for the Pirates. So has been a phenom rookie lately. He's 3 6. And then this Madrid kid also batting ninth. He's 3-8. Don't mind those two. Um, and then for Tampa, just yuck. I mean, they should put some runs on the board. Tampa's one of those teams. Tampa's like Baltimore. It's just hard to pinpoint who's going to do good that game. So on a 13, what is it, a 13-game slate? 14-game slate. 
I don't think we got to take some chances here. Uh, but I do love Jeffrey Springs. Next up, we got the Dodgers at Atlanta. This should be fun to watch too, man. Humid and mostly cloudy. It's been hot in Atlanta. It's actually cooled down to 86 degrees today. Uh, 5.2 for the Dodgers, 4.6 for Atlanta. Both offenses look great. We got Julio Urias at 9-2 against Ian Anderson at 8-1. Totally off of Anderson because of the matchup. Urias has been looking better as of late. It's just him. He's always on a pitch count. If he can make it through six innings and get past this hot Atlanta offense, you could get him at really low ownership. You got to look at it that way. Definitely like him more of the Dodgers side here. Trey Turner. Freddie the Freak Freeman has been absolutely – he's been – him and Goldschmidt have been the two best players so far as far as payups um, this week. Will Smith got a home run today, I think it was, 5.6K. That's – they jacked his price way up, man. Muncie's 5.2 now. Taylor's 4K. Justin Turner, 4.4. That's fine. Bellinger, 4.5. I like that. Um, yeah, I don't mind the cheaper guys here. And you can stack up the cheaper guys and throw in some uh, Freddy the Freak Freeman. That looks pretty good to me. Ronald Acuna just – Fuck off, dude, with your goose eggs lately, man. I just can't. Give me some Dansbury Swanson instead. These guys are almost – now, if you would have told me at the beginning of the season that Dansbury Swanson and Ronald Acuna would be about the same price, i tell you you're full of shit, man. But that's where we're at right now. Swanson has been playing out of his mind. He's, he's right up there with Freeman and Goldschmidt, man. He's been absolutely amazing. And then Austin Riley, right there with Ronald Acuna. Then – underwhelming and i'm being very nice here uh, marcelo ozuna has been fine for 4k matt olson's coming back down to earth but for 4-2 i could take a shot there wilson Con william contreas wilson's brother 4-6 for a catcher's fine and then michael harris kind of coming back down to earth but i'm not giving up on this kid yet i still think he's got the goods at 2.9k next up we got washington at texas Texas Rangers have the highest projected total so far on the slate. Well, second highest. Second highest. Washington, four runs. Texas, 5-2. We got Paolo Aspino at 5K against Dane freaking Dunning at 7-5. Um, as far as Washington goes, not really much I like. I mean, you can always throw in Soto, but he hasn't done anything. Um I figure with 101 degrees, the roof's probably going to be closed. So it's probably going to favor the pitchers more. Dane Dunning actually doesn't look that bad today. Dane Dunning at 7.5K, ground ball pitcher. Doesn't know, isn't known for getting a lot of strikeouts. Um, but Washington could be the exception here. I like a Texas tack tomorrow. Just give me, I'm going to make it real easy for you. Give me Marcus Simeon, Corey Seager, Adios Garcia, and Fat Cole Calhoun. Those four. Love them. Next up, we got the Rockies at the Twins. Now, the Twins, I believe, are the highest implied total on the slate. We're looking at 88 degrees, hot weather. Winds not blowing out, though. 4.3 for the Rockies, 5.4 for the Twins. I'll take the under on the Rockies there. You got Jermaine Marquez against Dylan King Kong Bundy, who's in a phenomenal spot, and he's coming off a phenomenal performance. So I really like Bundy today at 7-7. You don't have to pay up for pitcher today, guys. You just don't have to. There's a lot – a lot of mid-range and lower mid-range pitchers that I do like here. Um, hell, even Jermaine Marquez has been decent. So this could be a very underwhelming game. It could be a pitcher's battle, right? Don't see anybody on Colorado I like. For the Twins, it's the usuals. It's Luis Urias at 5-3, Byron Buxton at 6-1, Carlos Correa at 5-1, and uh, Maxi Kepler at 4-8. That's a, probably the most I will pay for Maxi Kepler. Next up, we got Oakland at Kansas City. Humid, partly cloudy, 90 degrees. We're Now we're talking here. Uh, but, again, winds aren't blowing out. That would have been the, the, the straw that broke, broke the camels back here. 4.1 for Oakland, 4.6 for Kansas City. Cole Irving at 6-4 against Zach Greneke at 5-2. Cole Irving, I'm tempted. He's been one of the – he's been the only bright spot for the A's this year. He's the best pitcher they have. Um – there's, you know, what, one, two, three lefties in this projected lineup for Kansas City? I don't know. GPP only, but I don't know if it's going to be necessary on such a big slate because um, it is a risk, right? 
Kansas City plays a lot better at home. No interest in the A's bats for Kansas City. Really no interest here either, man. Um, nothing just jumping out at me. Ben Attendee's always, you know, got some power on his bat at 3-3. Bobby Witt does better, I believe, against righties. Yeah, Cole Irvin's a lefty. So, I mean, I think that's a pretty good matchup for Bobby Witt at 5-1. But, you know, they're missing Salvador Perez. It's just, yeah, Cole Irving might actually look better than what I thought. Next up, we got Toronto at Milwaukee, 82 degrees. Winds are blowing in at 9 miles an hour, so hopefully the dome will be open. You got 4.8 for Toronto, 3.9 for Milwaukee. Alex Man Alec Manoa at 9.5K against Adrian Hauser at 7.3. I think Manoa's fine, but I'm not going to like go out of my way to get to him. Guys, I play three lineups. I give the club one cash lineup, and I give them two GPPs. Don't think Manoa's going to make it, but, I mean, you never know. Um... It's just Milwaukee at home does kind of make me nervous. Blue Jays are always in play, right? Um, Vlad, uh, Bobachet's actually coming back and starting. He looks like he might have a pulse, guys. He might at 5.5K. Uh, Alejandro Kirk, this catcher, his price is down to 4.3. I kind of like that. T-score Hernandez has been absolutely phenomenal. He's 4.9 now. He's not cheap. And then you can take some stabs like Tapia, Chapman. Um, Lord is Guriel too. He's had double digit fantasy points in his last three. He's only two nine. So, I mean, you can go the cheap route with Toronto tomorrow. And it actually doesn't look that bad. And then for Milwaukee, Yelich at four, eight is a fine, um, Willie Adonis five, one Rowdy Tellis. And that's about it. That's about it there. That one's kind of easy to break down. Next up, we got Baltimore at the White Sox. What's the temperature there? 83 degrees. Winds are blown in at 7 miles an hour directly from center field. 3.8 for Baltimore. 4.9 for the Sox. We got Austin Voth, wherever the hell that is, at 5.9K going up versus Michael Kopachek. I ain't paying 9K for Michael Kopachek. I don't care if it's against Baltimore. Baltimore's been good lately, so he's totally off my radar. Out of the player pool, kaput. Um, Baltimore bats I like is Cedric Mullins. Trey Mancini, and then here's the key, guys. I get questions about Baltimore all the time, like, how do we play these guys? And it's like between Sanitar, Hayes, and Mountcastle, you don't know which one's going to go off. One of them goes off, the other two dud. So good luck to you with that. Put all three of their names in a hat and pick a name. I know, great, great, you know, great analyst there. But, I mean, Rug Odor doesn't look bad at 3-2. Um, sometimes even Jorge Mateo has a decent game. So, but the White Sox look pretty good, man. Um, going up against probably the Baltimore's bullpen. I'm assuming Tim Anderson at five K is decent. Um, it's against a righty though. Anderson against lefties looks better. You got Andrew Vaughn probably going to bat second. He's only three nine. Luis Roberts been great. Jose Abreu is only four K. A.J. Pollock against lefties is better, but, man, he's been doing great. He's 3-2. Jacob Berger is another one of these cheap plays that's been pretty good at 3-4. So a White Sox stack looks pretty good going up against Austin Voth. So I don't know. I think they should project it over five runs. I think uh, Vegas is messing up here. But by tomorrow, they, they I wouldn't be surprised if they were. Next up, we got the Cubbies at the Cardinals, 89 degrees. Um, let's see, 4.1 for the Cubbies, 5-1 for St. Louis. St. Louis always plays good at home. We got Kyle Hendricks at 6K against Andre Palante at 5-5. No thanks for either one. Um, Cubby bats have been pretty hot. I mean, Morel's always in play as long as he's leading off and as long as he's 3-4. Um, Ian Happ's been showing some upside. Wilson Contreras continues to suck. Wilson Contreras continues to be Cheeks. That's what we'll call him now, Cheeks. Be playing like ass Cheeks, guys. Um, Ortega, Wisdom, these guys have been pretty good. So, little Cub stack, doesn't look bad. And then my man Goldschmidt, Arnado, and that's about it. I'm not really going out of my way to stack St. Louis tomorrow, but this is the night before. We'll see, man. Like, my mind could change. Next up, we got Seattle at the Angels, 79 degrees. Angels are at home. 
Eight mile an hour winds blowing out, but it doesn't matter here. Four point one for Seattle. Five one for Anaheim. Chris Flexen. He'll go out there. He'll flex his muscles before every pitch, man. He's six point two K. Going up versus Michael Lorenzen at seven two. Um, this one's kind of hard to pin down, man. A Seattle stack, you can get crazy with it. They dudded today, though, just to forewarn you after looking good the day before. Chris Flexen's interesting against Anaheim. He's a ground ball pitcher. He's not known for his strikeouts, but at 6-2, again, it's a matchup thing. He gets the Angels who strike out the absolute most out of any team in the league. So 6.2K, I'm willing to take some shots with Chris Flexen. Problem is when I play three lineups, I can't play everybody. So if I get, I'm going to try and get to him. If I don't, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. It's just the strikeout upside is there for him. Seattle bats. Um, nothing really jumps out at me here. Angels, of course, Tyler Ward, Trout, Otani, Walsh. Top four look pretty good. Walsh is only 3-6, but you're going to pay a hefty penny for the rest. Shohei, 6K. Trout, 5-8. Tyler Ward, 4-5. Four, 4-5. Five. Four, five. Get Tyler Ward while he's still in the 4K range because this price will go up to over 5K pretty soon. Next up, we got the Phillies at San Diego. 3.8 for the Phillies. 3.4 for uh, San Diego. For the Padres. There you go, Skywalker. Um, we got Aaron Nola on the mound at 10-3 versus Mackenzie Gore at 9-1. Two good pitchers here, man. I like both of them. Um... Man, Joe Muskrat had a horrible outing tonight. He came back from the, the COVID. I can't believe COVID's still a fucking thing here, man. But apparently it, it, it's it's going to be a forever thing. I remember the good old days that you caught a cold or, or even a flu and you still went out there and played the fucking game. But apparently now here we are, 2022, everybody's fucking soft all of a sudden. But he must not have been feeling good, though, because he got one strikeout. He got lit up. I think he ended up with three fantasy points. Schwarber's been phenomenal, 5.2K. I mean, you want to take a shot? Sure. Um, let me look at McKenzie. McKenzie's one of those names that cracks me up. It's one of those names where it could be a boy's name or a girl's name, right? Uh, let's see. Is he even on? Where's McKenzie Gore on here? I'm looking at draft dashboard here before I flip over. Let's see here, guys. Bear with me. So he's had two rough outings in a row. A negative 12 and a negative 6. After getting a 34, 30, and a 25. Last time against the Phillies, he got 13 fantasy points. I think this could be a get-right spot for him. 9-1's a little steep for a guy that's went out there two games in a row now and has gotten us negative fantasy points. But out of the two, definitely give me Aaron Nola. Right, San Diego's good, but they're you know they haven't been great. They're missing their two best players. So Aaron Nola, probably by far is my favorite pay-up pitcher at ten three. I'll put it to you that way. Bats here, um, I guess Schwarber because he's been great. He homered again today. That's about it here for San Diego. Um, I can't believe Luke Voigt's 5K now. They must still think this guy's a course field. Cronenworth's 5'5", five, five, too expensive. Profar, 4'9", too expensive. Like, no no thanks. I'm not paying that. Next up, we got Detroit at Arizona, guys. They'll be in the dome, 102 degrees outside. I'm sure that shit will be closed. 3.8 for Detroit, 4.9 for Arizona. Rone Garcia at 5.6K. Versus Merrill, Machine Gun Kelly at 7-9, who's looking like his old self again. And he's at home. Love this play, Machine Gun Kelly, going up against Detroit. However, I do like a Detroit batter, too. I love Javi Baez at 4-5. He's been sensational. There's a new word for you guys. He's been absolutely sensational. Um, but that's about it. Riley Green at 2-2, batting second. Yeah, he's on play. I mean, for 2-2, um, this kid's good. He's pretty good. So it's a hitter friendly park. So yeah, give me Riley Green, give me Javi Baez. I don't see Machine Gun Kelly pitching a perfect game. So, um, but at the same time, like an Arizona sack doesn't look bad, but they're another team. Who's going to go off here? You can play the odds. You got Bar Dalton Barshow. We know he's got power. 
We know Alec Thomas has been good this year. Josh Rojas has been decent. Christian Walker has been really good. Peralta has been really good. Like, you can make us a solid case for stacking Arizona tomorrow. I guarantee you there will be low on. Last but definitely not least, we got the Reds at the Giants. The Giants are back home, 56 degrees. 3.4 for the Reds, 4.8 for the Giants. Winds are always blowing out here. Um, Graham Cracker, Ashcraft at 7.4K. Going up versus Alex Corn on the Cob at 8.3. Uh, I like Alex Corn on the Cob today. I like Giants pitchers at home. Um, so, yeah, 8 3 is a fair price for a Corn on the Cob, man. As far as Red Bats go, no thank you. As far as Giants Bats go, I like a Giants stack. So, Ashcraft is a righty. For as long as he, he stays in the game, the Giants are going to roll all their lefties here. Jock Peterson, Yastrzemski. Larry Yastrzemski's price. He's only 3.6K. Jock Peterson's only 4.3K. Brandon, get out the belt. He's only 4.5K. And that's about it. That's about where I'll go. I mean, you can get Flores in there. He's got some pop every now and then. Um, but, yeah, I like a giant stack today. They look pretty dope. Austin Wins went insane the other day. He's only 2-2 if you think he keeps it rolling, the catcher. But, yeah, guys, so favorite stacks, Giants, um, White Sox, Giants, White Sox, Twins, Rangers, Dodgers, and Astros. Astros have been really hot. Astros are probably my favorite sack on the whole entire slate because I think I'm going to keep picking on these Yankee starters because they keep just having shitty games, man. Just utter shit, utter crap. Let's go to draft dashboard real quick. Let's look at pictures real quick, guys. I hate making these videos so long, but I hope you guys don't mind. It's a big slate. We just want to get everything right, you know. If you guys want to try this draft dashboard out for yourself, check it out. It's only $1 for 30 days. Just click on the link in the description below, and you yourself can have Draft Dashboard right here. This exact freaking tool you're looking at. All right, so, again, Aaron Noah, he's 10-3. 31, 20, 32 in his last three. He goes deep into games, too. Eight, seven, eight innings in his last three. Definitely love that. Um, and then Luis Cervino, like I said, the guy's 10-2. Last, last two games have been shit. 15 and a zero. Way to go, man. I'm going to fade him. Nick Pavetta again at 98 looks pretty good. Um, if I can afford this, if I can afford the salary and just get to Aaron Nola in a better matchup, sure. But 9.8K, 33, 23, 20, 31, 21. Very consistent here. Now I know I said that about Jordan Montgomery the other day, but yeah, guess what? He's a Yankee starting pitcher. They're all getting blown up. So, but 98's pretty, pretty fair. Alec Manoa at 9.5. I'd probably rather get to Pavetta. Um, and then, like I said, my man Jeffrey Springs here, 8.5K, gets a solid matchup against Pittsburgh at home. It's a huge difference. Two ballparks where I love pitching the pitchers is Tampa Bay and Giants, whatever it was, Candlestick Park. Fucking, it was Pac Bell Park. I don't know whatever the fuck they call it now these days. Um, but depending on what the, whatever the month is, that's the name of the park. But those are my favorite two park, the roster home pitchers. So give me Jeffrey Springs at 8.5K. Justin Verlander at 10.6. I'd rather play Nola in a better matchup. But I'm curious to see where my voice just cracked again there. But I'm curious to see what his ownership comes in at. He comes at a low, low ownership. I best believe I'm going to take some shots with Justin Verlander. He's got good upside, man. And he's coming off a bad game. Like I said, Julio Urias at 9-2. It's always a gamble when you're pitching against Atlanta at home, but he's been solid. 27, 28 in his last two, and he's pitched six innings in the last two. He's capped at six innings, though. That's it. So, Vandal, just be careful. At five innings, they could pull this guy. So, it's a risk. 9-2, it's a tough matchup. Alex Corn on the Cobb at 8.3K. He hasn't looked great, but against Cincinnati, 21 and a 22. So, and at home, I think hopefully he's all owned. You can get him at mid-range at 8.3, looks good. And then Machine Gun Kelly, 
7.9K is great. 25, 12, 25, 10, 10. So he's been pitching good as of late. And he gets Detroit in Arizona. So, yeah, love me some Machine Gun Kelly at 7.9. Cole Irving, like I said, at 6.4 if you want to go dumpster diving here. 27, 7, 15, 10, 15. So just a safe play at 6-4. He's had a good history against Kansas City. 21, 16, 24. If he gets one of these 20-plus fantasy point outings in only 6-4, you might be looking at, at some decent uh, winnings tomorrow because that just allows you to pay it for more bats. But on a big slate, there's always going to be value bats. Dylan King Kong Bundy is only 7.7K. He gets the Colorado Rockies at home. Coming off a game where he pitched eight, in, eight innings, 32 fantasy points after two horrible outings. Same thing can happen to Mackenzie Gore, like I said. Two horrible outings. He could bounce back here, but I'm not, I don't know if I want to pay 9 1 to find out. Dylan Bundy, I'll pay 7 to 7 to find out. And then on the opposite end, Jermaine Marquez is only 6 9. Going up against Minnesota, Marquez is, you know, for a course field pitcher, he pitches obviously a lot better outside of course field, but still 11 24 20 in his last three. Last time it's Minnesota, a 16, 6.9K, that's about right. Um, but, yeah, give me Dylan King Kong Bundy for some value. Cole Irving, GPPs only. Um, Machine Gun Kelly, 7.9. You guys see where I'm going here. You really don't have to pay up for these premium prices at pitcher. Alex Corn on the cop, 8.3. Um, those are my favorite mid-tiers, man. Jeffrey Springs is probably my favorite of all, 8.5K against Pittsburgh. That's where the buck stops with me. And then if I can afford these upper tier pitchers, give me Aaron Nola. And depending on what Verlander's ownership is, if it's at single digits, I'll take some Verlander at 10-6. If I can find the value bats, which DFS club, you know I can find the value bats. So that's going to do it, guys. So we went over all 30 games of this, uh, this late. It's Friday, guys. It's payday. What better time to come join the DFS club? Stop missing out, guys. Stop losing. Start winning. Go to DFSclub.com. Pick your plans. Click on my logo. Click join now, and you're in. It's that simple. If you have any questions regarding the DFS club memberships, email me, SkywalkerDFS at gmail.com. NBA Summer League is almost a week and a half away. It's right around the corner, guys. So don't miss out on that, too, because we play every single sport, including prize picks, sports wagering. And I wish you guys could see Schroeder right now. He's wrapped up in this blanket, but just his arm is sticking out. I can't wait to take a picture of this. Um, so, yeah, guys, thank you so much. Again, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below. You guys are killing it, and I have no one to thank but you guys. God bless you. Let's get this bread. Don't take shit from nobody. I'll see you guys in the UFC video. Take care.